everyone. Welcome to Lex Talk, World Talk Show presented by Clickaway Creators. Today we have Mr. Tushar Agrawal with us. Mr. Agrawal is the first generation lawyer coming from a small town of Meerut in Uttar Pradesh. After working with few renowned Supreme Court judges and senior advocates in Delhi, he has started his independent practice across various courts and tribunals in Delhi. His practice primarily focuses on criminal law, constitutional law, and commercial arbitration. Okay, Jens starting from legal opinion, legal drafting, to presenting arguments before the court of law. Mr. Agrawal was also one of the assisting counsels representing Dr. Shashi Tharoor in a famous Sunanda Pushkar death case. He has also appeared in few pro bono cases with senior counsels, representing association of victims of Upaha tragedy, along with that associations of victims of Meerut fire tragedy, and many more. Let me just introduce to the man himself. Hello, Tushar, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> Glad to know that. I'm good too. Thank you for asking. So, uh, Mr. Tushar, what are your uh, major practice areas in the field of law? Uh, if I talk about the major practice areas, so as you already mentioned in my uh, bio sheet as well, uh, my major practice areas are criminal law, constitutional law, and uh, commercial arbitration. Uh, so, in these are the three major areas where my chamber. Uh, provides opinion to the clients and uh, represent them before the court of law. And with the passage of time, since the financial frauds are increasing and uh, contracts are being frustrated because of the COVID and something. So these uh, are the areas where the lot of litigation is coming up. So yeah, so these will be the three major areas for my area of practice. All right, great. Uh, and what paradigm shift have you seen in the area of criminal law from the older traditional times in India? Uh, so as far as the paradigm shift is concerned, so initially the criminal law was very limited uh, to the traditional crimes, I must say, which are uh, codified in the, in, into Indian penal code like murder, theft, and uh, maybe uh, in, when it comes of heinous crimes, rape or something like this. So the criminal law was limited to Indian penal code. But now with the passage of time, uh, the things are changing from these uh, heinous crimes to the financial frauds and the white collar crimes, where the very influential people of the society and uh, rich people of the society, I must say, they are in the nexus uh, with each other are committing financial frauds, which is causing loss to the economy and exchequer of the country. So these are the offenses. That's why the government has come up with a lot of special statutes like Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Uh, Companies Act where the serious fraud investigation office uh, investigates about a fraud committed within the company. So these are some areas now where the most of the crimes are being reported, are being investigated, and that's why they are going for the litigations as well. So yeah, so this would be the major paradigm shift, I must say, in the criminal law. Answering that question. Uh, but before I ask you about, you know, uh, the scope of uh, practice in the area of, of uh, criminal law in India. I've, I'm really, uh, you know, interested in knowing about your journey as a legal professional so far. So can you please throw some light on that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult to uh, tell this thing in few words, but yes, uh, I completed my uh, LLB in 2015 uh, from MIT Law School, MIT University, Noida. So after that, uh, I started uh, my journey into the litigation practice by joining a senior advocate, Mr. Vikas Bhava. He's a renowned senior advocate in uh, uh, Delhi and uh, he has a lot of, uh, uh, he is an emerging practice and well-established practice in uh, India, across India. He was also invited by one of the international criminal law jurists uh, in the Hague, International Court of Justice. He was invited by there. So yes, I started with that because training is very important into the legal profession before you start your independent practice. And uh, then after working with him for a good amount of years, I started my own independent practice and uh, started appearing on my own or something like this. So now, yes, uh, initially in uh, some time since I'm a first generation lawyer, so it is really uh, struggling and ha hard to establish your own practice to build your own face value. But yes, with the guidance of your mentors, my uh, mentor come trainer to whom I joined and with the support of family. Yes, today I'm here before you because uh, since Lex Talk World has a 
recognize that uh, some uh, legal luminaries are doing well across the world. So yes, I am before you like this. Thank you so much for your kind words, uh, Mr. Tushar. Uh, and also for sharing your journey with us. Uh, now, getting back to the question that I'm really interested in uh, knowing an answer to. Uh, what scope of practice do you see in the area of criminal law in India? Uh, so as far as I already mentioned, uh, the, uh, since the, there is a lot of paradigm shift from the traditional crimes to the financial frauds. Uh, and uh, so in India, the scope is really increasing. There are a lot of people who are doing civil commercial arbitrations, but there are many few advocates uh, who are into criminal law practice. And uh, with the passage of time, uh, since technology is coming into picture, so the scope of cyber crime, I must say, and uh, when people are uh, facing problem uh, at the behest of many real estate builders who are committing frauds, or uh, there are many companies, there are internal frauds being reported. So yes, with the passage of time, as far as the investigation agencies have become uh, strong and they have a lot of tools to investigate about the frauds, and a lot of cases are being reported. So there is a, since there's a dearth of good criminal lawyers, so yeah, the scope is really increasing. So if a person who uh, wants to enter into criminal law and advocate who is just passed out, he can join a criminal lawyer, good criminal lawyer office and uh, explore the scope of work. And yes, uh, it's the sky is the limit because uh, if you want, but the, the key to uh, get success in this field of criminal law is that you have to be patient enough to uh, wait for the time, yes, you start getting the cases of the clients and you start representing your client before the court. Uh, in few years, initial few years, you have to keep the patience. And if you pass those few years, then uh, there will be no limit. Uh, you will be recognized soon because since there are a lot of uh, civil lawyers, but not good criminal lawyers. So as far as you start doing good before the courts and you start representing your clients before the courts, so you start getting recognition as well. And the criminal is always uh, being very attractive to the people. Lot of uh, celebrity cases are also there where the media coverage is there, like I mentioned. So Shan Singh Rajput case. So there's also attraction to towards these things when the criminal law is there that you get a lot of publicity as well. So yeah, just spend some time in this law and thus you will people will get to know that there are a lot of scope in this criminal law. All right. Wow. I was expecting an answer like crimes are increasing. So we need more criminal lawyers. Thank you. Thank you for answering that question uh, again. Uh, please tell us about your most memorable case and what are your takeaways from there. Though I have an idea what your answer would be because I really want that to be your answer. But please go ahead. Uh, so I'll take uh, after my giving the answer, I'll just ask whether I met matched your expectation. <laughs> sure. Uh, so here I would like to mention uh, just two cases, one which I am uh, still assisting one of the senior counsels uh, when I joined him, Mr. Vikas Power. It was a case of uh, Dr. Shashi Tharoor. He's a sitting member of parliament in India. Uh, so he was uh, charged in a uh, case of uh, his wife where she was uh, found dead in a hotel. So he was charged for abetment to suicide in that case. Uh, so the, that was a very, very celebrity and uh, case uh, in, in as far as uh, the criminal case is concerned in India. Law, got a lot of media publicity as well for obvious reasons. Uh, there is no requirement for mention that. So that in a high profile case, uh, what used to happen, we used to handle many sensitive informations. So our responsibility was that whatever we say in the court, uh, that can become a breaking news. So we have to be very careful in making any statement on behalf of Dr. Shashi Tharu and giving any bite to the media or giving handling any case of like this. So it was a lot of exposure and experience for me. And the key takeaway was that when you handle such a uh, high profile case, you have to be very careful and whatever you say, just say so that it cannot harm your uh, the reputation or the interest of your client, which is uh, the ultimate thing for us because a client has come to us to save his life from a criminal case. So yes, if uh, we are making any statement on behalf of him before the court of law, so we have to be very careful because any wrong statement uh, can uh, hamper the entire trial. And second, uh, which I independently handled a matter 
in which uh, a case of uh, section 376 which is uh, sexual harassment and rape uh, was registered against my client so according to him uh, it was a false case registered by the uh, female this by the complainant who said that uh, my client uh, committed a rape uh, on the pretext of promise to marry so but uh, the my client's version was that uh, he uh, he but the case has been registered to extort money from him so uh, believing his version and having some proofs regarding that we filed a complaint uh, in the uh, jurisdictional police station but police didn't uh, register any fir for the extortion and uh, then we file a application uh, before the magistrate court where the magistrate has the power to direct to the police to register an fir if a cognizance or cognizable offense is made out so we fight for our case there and finally i got successful in getting an fir registered under for the extortion against the, the girl who filed a false case against my client so the key takeaway for me for there with initially uh, on the version of a female uh, because our in, in indian laws are female protected considering that they got a protection and they don't uh, get undue harassment at the hand of other parts of the society but uh, since they are being misused also so if we see prima facie so we find that uh, yes the male part is uh, wrong and, uh, and he should be punished but sometimes the picture is something so you have to believe your client you have to work on the case very uh, deeply and then call out the facts if the innocent is being falsely framed in a case so you can fight that case and present the right fact before the court and a right story before the court so that uh, the in, uh, justice can happen in this case so these are the two cases uh, where i have found uh, very interesting and uh, good uh, in my career as of now there are lot of but yes uh, i would highlight uh, these two so i guess uh, there was a telepathy that happened when i was asking you that question and yes i was uh, about to tell you that that it must be dr shashi tharoor's case but thank you so much for answering that question and at the same time uh let's just focus from the criminal law uh, to your uh, you know uh, other major practice areas how do you look at commercial arbitration uh and insolvency and bankruptcy law in 2021 and how do you think that it can uh, change maybe 5 years down the line yeah uh, that's a very interesting question i must say in the present scenario as well thank you uh, arbitration uh, is one of my practice areas as well uh so uh, always uh, any company or any private individual if he does any business transaction there is a contract behind it and since the litigation is a very time consuming affair so people have started putting a clause of dispute resolution where they want to resort to the arbitration if uh, they find any dispute in future amongst themselves so if a party does the contract and uh, some conditions are not being fulfilled at the end of one of the parties or both of the parties so uh, they send notices to each other and then finally if they don't uh, get a solution so they resort to the arbitration proceedings so during lockdown a uh, lot of people because of there was the economy was in crisis the businesses were closed so many individuals and many companies could not fulfill their contractual liabilities so these commercial arbitration uh, clauses were invoked uh, very heavily and a lot of arbitrations where the court appointed the arbitrators and arbitrations are still going on and since it's a time bound remedy and a quick remedy than the litigation so people are resorting to commercial arbitration like anything so yes uh, in uh, down the line future in 5 years as you asked so commercial arbitration has lot of scope, scope its future uh almost all the contracts uh, after i guess in next 5 years itself uh, will have a arbitration clause if few does not have as of now so they'll be having arbitration clause and arbitration uh, will be the new uh, practice area where the lawyers will be start coming and uh, started practicing in that area as far as insolvency and bankruptcy is concerned that law itself is a major change in the area of uh, in the area of co commercial and uh, corporate law because uh, the insolvency and bankruptcy code came into india in 2016 and in the span of 5 years only that uh, law has attracted lot of attraction from the legal fraternity and as well as it has been invoked for the benefit of lot of uh, 
creditors whose money has not been returned by the debtors and whose money is stuck for a lot of years because the in 180 days the proceedings have to be uh, adjudicated by the concerned court of law so people have resorted to that insolvency and bankruptcy proceedings and they have got good results good decisions from the court courts have shown their interest in giving decisions and uh, settling the law of the land regarding insolvency and bankruptcy so that uh, uh, the other persons who are facing the same problem they can re get relief under the light of that uh, given judgment and settled principle of law so yes in 5 uh, years this uh, insolvency and bankruptcy will also is going the litigation is going to increase in this area as well because it is a major relief giving statute though it uh, sometime it get misused also because sometime uh, a, a company who has in, who having a worth of 100 crores for some reason they are not uh, able to give uh, money back to someone who is uh, liable to get that money from that company uh, so and uh, suppose that a person uh, wants to have person gave the credit of amount 1 crore to that company a company is having a worth of 100 crores but that 1 crore person can go to the consider uh, concerned jurisdiction of uh, court jurisdiction concerned jurisdiction of court and can ask that that company should be declared insolvent so times sometimes a healthy company who is having a good turnover running a good business and on the application of uh, some person creditor who is having very low uh, proportionate demand from that uh, company so that company gets uh, insolvent sometime so that uh, that is also being uh, used as a tool to get a good healthy business uh, on the knees sometimes so that should not happen but yes uh, it's a case where the persons whose money is stuck so they can approach to the court and they get a good relief so it has a lot of uh, practice uh, in this area we can see in commercial arbitration as well as insolvency bankruptcy thank you so much uh, for this wonderful explanation uh, about the commercial uh, arbitration and you know your major practice areas basically uh i was just thinking about the most memorable cases of yours and that how do you think uh, because obviously you know handling a high profile case uh, comes with a lot of responsibility and pressure at the same time so uh, for our viewers uh, what do you think that you would like to suggest from your end that they, you know how to handle the pressure and you know how to cope with the responsibilities uh so as far as handling the pressure in uh, uh working when working on the high profile case is concerned so yes in that case uh, you need to be very strictly very professional about the case you need not to think emotionally sometime what happens you uh, in criminal law usually it happens you read a story and you start judging that person who has come to you who is or who's the other party in that case and you start reading this thing uh, that okay the we are reading this uh, and this is the story but we found uh, sometimes we found our client only guilty in our mind and uh, we are not able to justify that uh, case sometimes because we think he according to the facts of the case we derive a judgment in our own mind that yeah this person is the guilty and uh, we should not do it so while doing this uh, we should be very strictly and very professional uh, uh, regarding that case yet yeah, that client has come he has approached your chamber to get a relief in certain case and uh, being a professional you have to give uh, your best with the support of your team of uh, colleagues and juniors so that he can get the relief so ultimately the result is that if you are successful in getting a relief so your uh, uh, reputation and uh, your fame gets increased amongst the fraternity that this lawyer is doing good also as uh, your litigation skills and your uh, uh other skills of research in uh, legal area also gets polished uh, as far as you uh, you apply your mind in a particular case as much as complicated case you get so uh, your research skills also gets polished so yes so by handling a high profile case just stick to the facts of the case just stick to the uh, what is happening in the case and don't think uh, and don't uh, uh don't get influence yourself from uh, outside factors which can affect your performance so yes uh, so ultimately you will be successful in handling that pressure uh, otherwise if you think too much uh, about the case and uh, you will allow your the outside factors to influence you so yes you will start feeling that uh, you are doing something wrong or you are doing something uh, 
you should not do it and uh, sometimes in that pressure also you commit a mistake which should not happen so just be calm just uh, work as a professional and stick to the case without thinking anything thank you so much uh, for sharing such great insights with us uh, mr tushar and uh, it was wonderful chatting with you uh, you have enlightened uh, the viewers as well with a lot of information and we really look forward to having a chat with you again in the future on maybe some other trending topics in the international legal industry for our viewers if you really like this chat with mr agrawal which of course you would please like and share this video and also subscribe to the click away creators youtube channel to appreciate what we do and you have more coming from industry legal leaders this is bharti for lex talk signing off